Very good evening, everybody. Thank you for coming. It's a big honor to be invited to play in such a prestigious uh, venue. I think I thank each and every one of you for coming such, on such a chilly evening. I've never been in minus four degrees Celsius. For me, it's the first time. So I thank you immensely for having made it all the way to the Kennedy Center. I will start off the, as uh, Manuel Cáceres, my big friend and the ambassador of Paraguay, was saying, I'm celebrating my 50th anniversary as a classical guitarist. It started off in Italy when I was just a boy. And uh, this guitar has uh, been in my hands ever since. And it's become a passion, love, the way I found uh, both my vocation in life and, of course, uh, it's been my companion all these years. I'll play 12 pieces. I call them portraits because they represent their time perfectly. And, of course, they also represent the classical guitar to perfection. The classical guitar is a relatively new instrument, but its relatives, both the vihuela and the lute, go back hundreds of years. So the two first pieces I will play are two pieces by one Italian composer who was more known for being an astronomer. I'm referring to Galileo Galilei, the famous uh, astronomer who discovered that the Earth is the center, uh, not the center of the universe, but the sun of our solar system. But he was a great lute composer. And although he's a fame as, a, as an astronomer, I did his uh, fame as a, as a composer for the lute. These two pieces are jewels. One is a piece based on the canals of Venice. So you hear like the movements of the waves in the canals and the gondolas moving in the canals of Venice. And the following piece is a saltarello, an, uh, an ancient dance which uh, emulates the um, hornpipes like a bagpipe, like the one used by the Scottish, but it's an Italian instrument called the corna musa. Two pieces, saltarello and passo in mezzo by Galileo Galilei.
Thank you. But the greatest composer of all time award goes to the German composer Johannes Sebastian Bach. This is a man who inspired me since I was a very young man. The first thing that I really uh, cherished about the man is that uh, I discovered through a book, which is more like a diary of his wife, uh, Anna Magdalena, that he signed with an acronym all his music, the three letters S, D, G, standing for Soli Deo Gloria, to God all the glory. And when I realized that this man was composing for the Almighty, I simply said, wow. He had no more perfect work to do, and his music, in a way, takes you there. And um, he's always been associated to being a cold man, simply because his music is perfect when it comes to meter, the, the way the music fits every, every measure. But he had 21 children, and that's not precisely what you call a cold, calculating man, so, yeah. Actually, you know, my wife and I, we have eight children. So we were, in a way, we we're trying to imitate Bach, but we didn't make it all the way to 21. The piece I'm gonna play is gonna, it's one of the most beautiful. It's a prelude by, written for the cello. That takes you from a D, from a chord in D. There's a beautiful travel in between, all the way to a second D, which is like a, an octave higher here. And everything that Bach does in between is Incredible. It's a beautiful trip in music. It's Prelude in D by Johannes Sebastian Bach.
for the next piece, I'm going to need a big uh, applause because I'm going to give the welcome on stage to my beautiful daughter, Chiara. <laughs> Chiara Bellucci. <laughs> yeah, she's uh, <laughs> one of the most beautiful creatures in the world, and she has a beautiful voice. Uh, most of my children play instruments or sing. Chiara does both things very well, and I... You know, being uh, already grown up, my children, I want to give her a big uh, opportunity, like tonight, to sing together one of those beautiful preludes by Bach, which is the prelude in C, from the Well-Tempered Clavier Suite. And uh, it's bonded to the most beautiful prayer in the Catholic liturgy, which is the Ave Maria, which is what the Archangel Gabriel told the Virgin Mary when she was going to conceive uh, our Lord Jesus Christ. So she sings it so beautifully, and I said, uh, let's put together the most beautiful prelude with the most beautiful words from the most beautiful prayer. Ave Maria, by Bach Gunod. I thought I was going to get uh, <laughs> emotional about it, but wow, it really made me tremble. Thank you, Gera. Thank you. I'll play, um, ever since I discovered the beauty of the guitar, which really lies in its intimacy with the sound, I started uh, realizing that 
since you know the first two, three, four hundred years of uh, art music, which was very much sponsored by the Catholic Church, when uh, that changed through the Romantic era and contemporary times, what happened is that Hollywood really took a leading role in enrolling some of the greatest uh, composer of the day. And I'll play two pieces that I have uh, fell in love when I heard on the, in their respective movies by two uh, equally great composers. One is uh, Hans Zimmer. He made the soundtrack for Maximus. The movie was uh, Gladiator. And I love that beautiful song where he's like re trying to grasp his wife and his child that were killed by the emperor. So, um, and I made a transcription for the guitar for that piece. And the other piece that I will play together at the end of the, the other one is another great piece by an Italian composer, Ennio Morricone, whom I consider the greatest composer for the movies ever. He's made some of the greatest. And uh, this one is also special for me and my classmates because uh, um, it was the first time that a Hollywood crew came to Paraguay. And in a scene of the movie where Robert De Niro and um, Jeremy Irons play the role of two Jesuit priests, Jeremy Irons is with a, an oboe at the edge of the Iguazu Falls playing uh, this melody called Gabriel's Oboe. The music is from the movie The Mission. So uh, back to back I'll play Gladiator and The Mission.
the classical guitar has a characteristic to it that uh, some of the pieces are played in a, with a tuning when you tune the sixth string to a D in order to reach a lower note than usual. And all the pieces I've been playing so far are all in D. I do that because uh, otherwise I would have to be tuning between uh, E and D and that tends the guitar to get out of tune very easily. So I'll close this section in D with a beautiful piece by a Brazilian composer called uh, João Teixeira Guimarães. And uh, what this guy did, he composed a choro. Choro means to cry. Uh, but the piece is not a sad one. The reason it's called choro is because it's inspired in the sighing of a child that's crying. You'll hear like a rhythm repeating. It's like a rhythmic uh, uh, pedal. And this is the idea behind a choro cry. That's why the piece is called that. And the name of the piece is uh, uh, Music Box because he composed it for his uh, nine months old child. tune the guitar to E. And I'm going to start off with uh, perhaps the one piece that every guitar player wants to play one day in his life. I had the honor to play this piece with my first big teacher, because my first teachers were not very high profile. They were great teachers nonetheless, but their names don't really ring a bell. But my big, uh, first big teacher was a Spaniard, the Andres Segovia, the great uh, Spanish uh, player from Granada, from Andalusia. And I had the pleasure to play with this piece with him in Granada. And Granada is a beautiful uh, city at the, fee, at the uh, yeah, in the valleys be uh, beneath uh, the Sierra Nevada in Spain. And uh, there is a very beautiful palace in Granada. It's called La Alhambra, which is a Moorish p uh, palace and when the Moors uh, occupied uh, Spain, of course, they found uh, their most um, cherished liquid, which is water, in abundance. And they, of course, made a, a show of it. And they built all these beautiful fountains all throughout the palace. So what you will hear in the piece are the droplets of water falling from the edges of the, of the fountains. You will hear. <laughs> Think of these notes as droplets falling all around. 
And uh, as a uh, running underneath is a tremol, which is a, a technique imitating the, the, the mandolin. You will hear the flowing of water. The technique is... The two voices come combined into one. When Francisco Tarraga, the composer of the piece, was in Granada, he was struck by the beauty of the palace and the beauty of all this water that works by gravity. There's not a single motor getting this thing to work, and it still works to perfection. I've seen the thing, and it's breathtaking, and the piece really imitates it well. The piece is Recuerdos de la Alhambra, Remembrances of the Alhambra.
my maestro um, Andres Segovia once told me that at a New York concert, just a few months before he died, he uh, his hands were cold, just like mine now. They were freezing. But the difference between him and I is that he got off from stage, went backstage and asked for a, a bag full of hot water. He dipped his hands into the hot water to get his fingernails softer and his skin more sensitive to the touch of the strings. I cannot afford to do that because I'll probably go back there and never return. But, uh, <laughs> but his advice has been with me for many, many years. I actually have a hair dryer back in the bathroom, but it's no good. My hands are frozen. Um, I want to play, um, as I was telling you, I, was, I like uh, transcribing music from the movies because some of the greatest music is composed for the movies and actually some of the movies are more famous for the music that they produce than for the movie themselves. And uh, this is the case with the piece I'm going to play now. This is a, it's a beauty. It's, a, it's composed for two guitars. I made a transcription for one guitar. Uh, the piece was commissioned by um, the director of the movie, The Deer Hunter. It was a, an epic movie about the war in Vietnam, very sad uh, piece of history because a lot of young people died there. And this guy, the composer, Stanley Myers, saw a lot of the suffering in Vietnam, and he wrote this beautiful melody that really goes with the movie to perfection. The movie had an, an amazing uh, cast of actors, Robert De Niro, Christopher Walken, Meryl Streep, uh, John Savage, you name it. And it won um, every Oscar in the Academy that you can imagine. And of course, the music was one of them. The music is uh, Cavatina by the composer Stanley Myers.
The next two pieces are also soundtracks. Uh, one is from a movie that is practically gone um, totally forgotten because the movie was really no big deal. But the music to the piece has turned into the most played classical guitar piece ever. It's from a French movie about two kids that run to Venice for a platonic type of uh, romance. And the music was uh, um, played by one of my teachers, um, the Spaniard, Narciso Yepes, who played on a 10-string guitar and played this piece so uh, beautifully on the guitar that it, every guitarist, uh, when they start, they want to play ro romance, the name of the piece. And actually, it has become and grown into the greatest guitar piece ever. Singers like Julio Iglesias and other great singers have made it into a song as well. So you probably recognize the melody um, very rapidly. And uh, I will follow the piece by another great composer, by a great Italian composer. It's uh, Nino Rota, who wrote the soundtrack for The Godfather in 1972, becoming one of the most beautiful soundtracks ever. So I'll play back to back uh, Romance and um, The Godfather. I wish I had long hair to get my hands warm. <laughs> uh,
Thank you. <clears throat> this next piece is um, by, if not the greatest, one of the greatest guitar composers of all time. I mean, people who compose for the classical guitar. And uh, this composer is from the country that I live in since 1965, which is Paraguay. Paraguay has produced a musical genius of the same caliber as Bach, uh, Beethoven, although he's known in the classical guitar world uh, by every single guitarist I know, is perhaps not very much known in the classical music in general, but uh, he's a gigantic fear. And the piece, piece I'm gonna play is uh, from, um, is its last composition. He, he composed it in San Salvador because he moved uh, there towards the end of his life. He was directing a conservatory in music. And uh, uh, on this last day, I've spoken to a student of the person that was with him on that day when he composed this piece. The story goes like this. It's a beautiful story. I will tell it because it has to do with the music you will hear. Uh, Barrios, the name of the composer, Agustin Barrios Mangore, was in a class with one of his students, and when he was giving class, somebody knocked at the door. And you will hear something like knocking on a door. This is performed by two notes that you will hear at the very beginning. It was a very persistent knocking on the door to the point that Barrios got off his chair, went to the door, and he found himself face to face with an old lady with her hands stretched like that, and uh, she says, uh, an arm for the love of God. So Barrios got a few coins, put them in, in her hands, went back to, this, uh, to his student, and told him, you know what, I'm going to use this interruption and this knocking on the door as the, as the main conducting thread in the music. So you will hear constantly that knocking on the door, constantly. Barrios left the piece on a desk and went to sleep, thinking that maybe the day after he would have put a title to it. He didn't know he was gonna die that night, so he passed. And when the student that was with him told the story, the piece was called An On for the Love of God, for the story I've just told you. So listen carefully, because you will hear constantly that tuck, 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 tuck.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. Well, um, I have to look at the clock and this thing is gonna end. So I say thank you very much to everybody for having come tonight and allowing me to celebrate 50 years with the guitar in such a magnificent way. And uh, thank you, thank you from the heart. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And this is also the time to say thank you to so many important people in my life because nobody gets uh, to 50 years playing a musical instrument unless he has a group of people. So first of all, my wife. She's uh, been uh, the mother of my eight children, our eight children. Thank you, my sweetheart. And uh, of course, uh, the ambassador of Paraguay, Dr. Manuel Cáceres, and of course, his beautiful wife, Ana. Thank you very much for this invitation. And um, thank you. And to my students and colleagues here present, I have many students in the US. Some of them are here present, the boss from uh, Mississippi and the Cameron. I know you're somewhere around there. Thank you for coming. Hi, Cameron. Thank you very, very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us at the Millennium Stage. For more information about upcoming Millennium Stage programming, please visit us online at kennedycenter.org or Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you enjoy the rest of your evening.